Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. We are going to do, so this is going to act as video diary, um, but also just a fun little thing that I wanted to, to do, um, is a little advice giving, um, tips giving, discussion about love and relationships, that topic. That's probably one of my most favorite topics to talk about. It's one of my most favorite topics to read about with readings. And I have someone very special who I want to film together with. So um, as you guys know, I put it out there in the YouTube video. I put it in the yesterday's YouTube video. I also put it out there um, on Instagram to send in your questions sure looks so tight. <laughs> for love and relationships. So we have seven questions. Okay. Um, the last three, are, I numbered them. Okay. So the last three are kind of like more personal, like directed at us. And then like the first four are more general. Can we say this on the, on the internet? Can we ask, can we answer these on the internet? Is it like, oh yeah. Do you have to give like a disclaimer to like YouTube or something? No, no. Oh, okay. but sure. we will say um, personal disclaimer for both of us that let's push this back. So when we have to, when we turn off the video recording, you're gonna have to do it because I can't reach. Hope I don't knock it over. I don't have long arms. <laughs> okay. Um, so disclaimer: any advice that we give is purely our own advice. Yes, our own opinion. Um, Take what resonates and leave the rest. I, when it comes to this stuff, I'll, I'll say the truth what's on my mind. Yes. So um, don't take it personally. I'm not trying to sound like uh, um, a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. In other words, you may not like what we say. Or you may. You may or like. Maybe you do. Maybe or you, do, you so, may um, be watching and you didn't submit the question and you don't agree, which I completely invite you to place your opinions in the comments below because those of the people who did submit their questions and they watched the video will most likely be scrolling down and looking at all the comments so I do. give additional <laughs> advice you guys can chip in chirp in chirp in chime in chime in chime in give additional advice by leaving comments below so right without further ado i have my water do you have anything to drink just in uh, case i'll, I'll grab something <laughs> so don't mind me if i get up and Something. So welcome to our kitchen slash dining room section. <laughs> okay, let's start with number one. So do you want to? No, you go ahead. Okay, so number one, we kind of, this is the one I read to you earlier. So I'm just going to paraphrase because it was longer. So basically this person is asking, what do you do when someone you like and who likes you back but has issues of their own Plus, they keep secrets and they don't act on the things that they say. So to elaborate a little bit, this person, she was saying that um, that he didn't disclose that he had an engagement with the person, another girl. Um, he didn't. He he says things like, like I love you, I care about you, things like that. I want to be with you, but then okay. he doesn't act on it. Uh -huh. And then I guess he has other issues on his own where. Um, he, maybe he's just not, I think I'm thinking, taking it issues as in like, he's just not mature and act like proactive in his life. I think that's what the issue is. So she wants to know like, what do you do when they tell you that they like you, but they're not acting on it and you know that they like you and you really like them. So advice like that. Do you see, do you, do you, do you understand? Commitment issues maybe perhaps. <laughs> um, I, Okay, here, here's what, I'm gonna be honest right here. Move on. I mean, to keep these secret, secrets from you, okay? You may like them, they may like you, but if they're not willing to commit to you, uh, why keep your own happiness? Um, so do you, are you saying that she's wasting her time? In a, in, in a sense, yes, um, I get it. You want to wait for the perfect person or that person, but at the same time, you're missing out on things that uh, someone else could give you. you know? Right, I get um, that. I think, yeah, I agree. And also, I mean, I don't, I don't like make come off the wrong way either, <laughs> but just say it. No, I know, but like for example, you guys, you're gonna it. teach this person a lesson. Like, hey, you know what? Screw you. I'm tired of waiting for you. 
I want to find this person that likes me over here and they're expressing to me that they want to be with me and actually move, and on. Actually move on it. So I'm going to go to that person, right? And it's going to go uh, make something click in that other person. Like, oh, oh crap. I, I just messed it up. <laughs> They'll see the error. They'll the see things. the error. And <laughs> I mean, you, you go, you take it where you want it and go from there. But you know, just move on. Be happy with yourself. Be happy with your life, and don't worry about anybody else. If they if they want, they're leading you. You know, it's like that. Oh, you almost had it there. You almost had the it. The carrot dangling. The dangling carrot. Dangling the carrot. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, I feel like, especially if this is, it sounds from from your from your message. It sounds like it's not just one time that this happened. It sounds like this is multiple. There's multiple right. letdowns. Yeah. And so in my opinion, it's once or twice. Okay, fine. That's forgivable. I would probably do the same thing. I would probably say, you know what? I can, okay, maybe he just isn't ready yet. I'm willing to wait. But if it's a constant cycle that you're seeing and something as big as lying about being engaged to someone else, to me, that shows somebody who is... They're, they're, they're walking on, on terror. Don't worry about, <laughs> I'm just reading ahead. He's reading ahead. Um, don't, to me, someone who is lying about being engaged to someone else is someone that will lie about being in a relationship with someone else. So in other words, that to me is a red flag. That is somebody that won't be truthful when you, let's say you, the two of you did get serious. That person may very well do the same thing to you, to someone else. So I would say move on. Um, I would say as although as much as you have these strong feelings and you really enjoy this person and they it's, it's the thought of what it could be that is attracting you to that person and not exactly the facts like the truth and I feel like in that case you could probably find someone so much better and I think that you just definitely I think you got you got to move on. So don't, don't limit yourself. Yeah, there don't, are so don't, many to one person in a sea guys, of, gals, yeah, out there in a that, sea of people. I feel like he he's already letting you down, and it hasn't even started yet. Right. So definitely, it's just that's a big red flag. So, are you good with that one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Um, how do you deal when you have a miscommunication or a misunderstanding? So this is... Wait, wait, wait. So, are you talking about like text? Like, I'm um, texting someone something and they take it like I'm yelling at them? <laughs> or I'm mad at them? Which I'm, which I'm completely not. I'm just texting them. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Let me put it in all caps and like, tell them. Uh, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I what, think... are, are you mad at me? <laughs> no. Anyways, they don't specify if it's in text, but I think that they're asking is just like, how do we deal when, how do you deal when you have a miscommunication or misunderstanding in a relationship? Well, so, you talk about it. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you guys are Bottom upset line. at uh -huh. each other at the moment, cool off. Yeah. Bottom line. Go for a run. You got it. Would you? Because, okay, it's easy to say right now because we're not having a miscommunication or understanding misunderstanding to take a take a time out and think it through and then talk to the person. Chances are you don't talk to the person. I mean, don't go to bed. <laughs> don't go to bed angry. Me angry. Don't. But no. I would say the, if there is a misunderstanding or miscommunication, you need to talk about it. And I remember she used to call me like that. This is when we were dating. 11, 12, even 1 o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah. Like, I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was the one. I got work in the morning. I wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And he was always the one that was. I like, got work in the morning. Yeah. I got work at 4 o'clock in the morning. And that's, yeah, no, thank you. I want to talk about it. That's my Gemini rising. I have work in the morning. That's his Capricorn rising, by the way. Because some of you guys are astrologers and you will probably be laughing at that. I don't know but, what that means. Um, <laughs> Definitely, if there's a misunderstanding, you have to communi communicate, and it's really important that you communicate with one another. If you are in a committed, monogamous, well, I shouldn't say monogamous because some people are in open relationships, but if you are committed to somebody and there's a misunderstanding, don't go to your girlfriends 
or your family or the whole world about it before Especially you talk. Facebook, yeah. MySpace, before or, you talk uh, to oh, the whatever, person, whatever the Instagram, or, uh, all of it, uh, Snapchat, whatever. Before you I talk to the face. actual source. So if you're having an issue with your loved one, your specific, your significant other, talk to them first before you like bring in the whole calorie. Because you know, <laughs> your girlfriends or, or guy friends may not like that other person. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, this is my chance. So then how <laughs> would you say, how would we like find common ground? Is hey, it compromise? we gotta talk. So you talk it through to you. Talk it through until it you figure out. it out. And or it just makes or it worse. someone or one of one of you is weaker and you give in to the other person. You know what? It's not, not necessarily about being weaker too. You, you gotta understand. Sometimes it's compromise. It's compromise, yeah. Or sometimes that, you realize, yeah, one of you is wrong and the other person is right, and sometimes you just have to give in to the other person. You take one for the team sometimes, just for the benefit of not even wanting to fight anymore. The best ones are, you know what? You're right. And then, you're like, and then isn't that a shocker though? Like when, has that happened? That's happened to us, right? Where I, has I told you that you were right and you were like, no, I think it's the opposite. And he was like ready to fight back. And then he was like, Ugh. no, it's you. <laughs> like, you know, you're right. Okay. And that's, that is, that is one that move will, on. That will throw you for a loop when they tell you that you are right. And you're like, Cause then you can't you can't come back with all of these things that you built up all day that you built up in your head. Because you, you could say. argue <laughs> all day, all night, back yeah. and forth, and get nothing done. Yeah. So our my tip, my advice is once you've communicated and once you guys find common ground and you agree to either disagree or you agree that so and so was right and you were wrong, whatever, let it go, right? Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's easier said than done. I'm very guilty of this. I don't always let things go, but it's very important to, and I'm learning this too, is don't bring up old past miscommunications and misunderstandings, especially if you have let it go. Can I zoom in on me real quick and give my face? <laughs> true it's true and i i don't i don't think i do that all the time do i no I uh, since we got married you know since we've been married when we were dating, dating it, was yeah, it was different different yeah i yeah. think that's a, i think that's a lot of people though like when you're a boyfriend girlfriend or boyfriend boyfriend or girlfriend girlfriend i think it's just when you're when you really like commit whether it's by law or it's just like you make that decision Common. yeah it to me it, you go up another level without realizing it because it's just like there's there you you don't you throw away like that possibility of like oh he can just break up with me the next day i mean you can break i can up do with it right now if i, I know to. but like, i mean i'm just but. saying like i don't know what it is but there's just the energy shifts in the relationship i feel when you do that but uh, yeah we were very we had a very immature relationship i would say like the first couple of years yeah and it was mostly me i was a very melodramatic girlfriend um dramatic I'm not saying I'm perfect, but geez. emotional. But there were also times too, though, where you, you know, you didn't communicate when we should have communicated. Like you got on my nerves. Oh my god. Anyways, um, my, I'm pretty sure I got on her nerves a lot, but I think we both got on each other's nerves. Yeah. But I think it's when you, I don't know, we bypassed a lot of it though. Like we made it work. Communication is key though, you guys. Like you have to talk. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna communicate and you're gonna do the silent treatment. Or text. <sighs> what do you mean? Oh, like blocking them on the phones? People still do that? I, I, I guess. My, I, I, yeah, I know I know someone who used to do that. I don't talk to her anymore. Has she blocked you or what? No, she used to block her boyfriends. Oh. And I used to think I didn't I don't Time know, out. I, I don't I don't that's another level. <laughs> But yeah, so definitely how do you how to deal with that is definitely if you're having a miscommunication, it's because there's no communication. And it's also it could Remember also that one be time at the fair. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna bring that up. <laughs> when when there's miscommunication Like our first year of like when, yeah. yeah, the worst the first year was the worst year. <laughs> when there's miscommunication, 
Um, it's because there's, I'm trying to not talk about that because then I'm just going to get mad. Um, <laughs> when there's miscommunication, there's no communication and, or you have too much outside in, uh, influences, right, yeah. which is a big, I think we need to talk about that too. Um, especially those of you guys who are like fresh in a relationship. And then you run to your ex. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Assuming I can't on my face. Stop! Face. You're it's giving like, them all of my dirt. Like, anyway, like, really, like, did you just do that? Like, <laughs> what do you think they're gonna? Oh wait, yeah, maybe you should talk to that person. <laughs> He'll give you good advice. Anyways, so don't do that. Um, but I, <laughs> when you're fresh in a relationship, you guys, your your first impression of that person. You have to also remember everybody else that you talk to about that person, those are also first impressions and they may not have met them yet, but they're still getting these first impressions. You know what I mean? Like talk bad mouthing. If I were to bad mouth him to my family before they even had a chance to meet him, they will always remember the negatives. Oh, you did this to my daughter. Exactly. So that's why I'm saying when you're fresh in a relationship, it's so, so important that you don't do that. Um, I understand every once in a while you want to go to your girlfriends or whatever to talk about things. That's normal. Fine. But there is also a level of respect for your significant other. And I feel like it's just, you. you there's a boundary. There's like a, like a boundary there over how, how much do you let people in in your like inner circle. Like our little inner circle is is our is just us how how often do we let someone from the outside in and i think like if you compromise that too much then there's more miscommunication because then he would be afraid to talk to me because i would go out and talk to it about someone out to someone else you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i feel like it's like keep your inner circle really tight and if you need to vent vent but give them like the very vague -ish, soft summarized version not like you know the dirt yeah because the that's explicit dirt those people everyone on the outside will always remember the dirt before all or the spread stuff. it oh yeah <laughs> so don't don't do that don't fall for that number three tips for dealing with money stresses together i really like that question because i think that's us budget yeah savings put yes. something away if you don't need to buy it you can't pay for it cash don't get it but it says together together because that's easy to do solo but when we're both dealing with stresses of money as a couple and i feel like it's like a well if you're when you're gonna about to buy something and you go you gotta do i need it or do i want it but 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 also at the same time you gotta allocating it. your your finances to the proper um your proper, I mean, what, what do you got to pay? You know, mm -hmm. do you, what, what's a necessity that you have to pay? I also think it's the point I was trying to get to was if you like Starbucks a lot, <sighs> you, you could uh, you cut that off, cut it a, off little, a, little a little bit, bit. which Try. I did when we were saving, but then I brought it back when I was like ready to trust me. I the nails they haven't come back still, and it's been two she years. Looks nice without the nails, he likes them without the nails, but like, I, I'll check, <laughs> I'll check uh, an account, and I'm like. Hmm. One, two. Oh, speaking of this, let's see what my electricity bill is. Oh my gosh! So this is my this is my tip. Our electricity bills, it's high because we have the AC, and I ain't gonna be dying in in my own house. Um. So when it comes to money stresses, I think it's, it's something okay. getting stressed right now. Stop. <laughs> this is the, what? How much is it? Oh, it's it's like. Kind of the same as it was last week. Yeah, last month. okay. But see, here's the thing. That's like the pit of summer. But like, I, I see that bill. Like, okay, so, whew, I'm a little stressed here now. <laughs> How can, what can I do to pay for this and not let it happen again? You know, um, make sure we're not going hog wild with all our money. Yeah, like, do, do you guys, do, do you, uh, uh, not unnecessary. Do you guys, yeah, do you guys go to restaurants all the time? Yeah. And, th and then that's the point I want to make is, this question is... Take I'm, me in and out. Give me a number two. I'll be... Stop! What that, seven, getting, seven bucks? Yeah, it's about seven bucks. Well, I, I like in and out for, you know, I don't like Californians. I'm not an in and out person. I know, but too bad. But, I'll take one for the team every once in a while, but... I'm not an in and out person. 
Anyways. For me, for example, like growing up was if we got a pizza at the end of the week, that it was, was like a treat. luxury. It was luxury. And I didn't have, I didn't grow up with that because I grew up with a lot of privilege in my family. So when, when we wanted something, we always got it. So I was a little spoiled little brat. And he did, he did grow up more of like really appreciating something. Drinking some, soda. Appreciating, yeah, something like, as like, simple as I, having I would a collect, soda. We would collect the cans, leave them in the bag, and we had enough. We would go take them to recycling. Uh-huh. And with that money, we would go buy a pizza. And I didn't have that. I had everything we wanted all the time. My, we were very, I guess because... My parents made, spoiled. My parents spoiled us. They made a little bit more money, probably. No, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's that's, that's what it was. But, but so that registered with how we deal with money now, and which is also another good point is you have to look at your you and your significant other because I'm answering this question from a standpoint of a marriage. Yeah. Okay. So you and your person, you guys grew up in probably totally different money dynamic families. Is that, I don't even know if that makes sense. But, yeah. so for me, Maybe growing up, I grew up getting everything I wanted. I'm gonna, I'll just say it flat out, I did. Um, and he grew up having to work for what he wanted and really appreciating the simple things where we got, I we still had do. pizza like all the time. So his, for, his, his idea of money now is he works really hard for his money and he, he, it's really hard for him to spend on himself. Where I, if I want it... I will wear I the will, same pair of jeans. I don't... Yeah. He will wear out his clothes. Uh -huh. he, he very rarely goes shopping. Um, it's, it's with me. It's always me. If I want it, I'm going to get it. Because I was born and raised with, oh, we always got what we wanted. So... It was, yeah, it was, uh, that was a different dynamic. And so now when it comes to our finances, I am the one that is usually having to cut myself off from the things that I'm used to giving myself, like going to Starbucks every week, getting my, when I was getting my nails done every other, every two weeks. Um, it, when we were budgeting, it was me that had to cut corners because I was the one that was always spending my money and him, no, not so much. So <laughs> first off, like for one tip is like, you guys need to talk about it. You and your significant other discuss how how were you guys raised in with money? It's like like what is the issue? Yeah. What causes that stress? Is it is it saving? Is it saving or not being able to save? Or or, or are, are you are you spending too much somewhere in one area that you can't pay for the other? Uh huh. Like what like that's what you got to figure out and you got to work together. Work together as a team. Yeah, that's the other point I was gonna make is. When you guys are married, you don't have to have a shared checking account and stuff. So many, so many marriages don't. We barely did it this year for the stuff he's doing for his new job now. So we, this is the first year we've had a joint account and it's teaching us lessons where, where I'm like, oh, now he sees what money is coming in and out all the time with me yeah, like, <laughs> and so it's it's like it, it takes away from oh my own money it's not my own money anymore it's like oh if i want to go out and get a starbucks i have to remind him hey we only have this much amount in our checking account because if he's spending over and up to where he's at training right now it's like oh shit well we can't like spend that money yet because we have a bill that's going to be pulling out of it soon so <laughs> there's communication there that we have to do or like for example Oh, I want to plan a trip to this place. So every paycheck, I'll mm -hmm. take away X amount of dollars yeah. strictly for that. And once I know I have enough, like, hey, I'm going to go to this place yeah. and go have fun. And he's really, he's really good at that. And he's, he actually has taught me to be more organized with my money, organized with the bills. And I've learned a lot. So I will say, you guys, um, when you're stressing with money, it's combined income, okay? Um, you guys need to be completely honest with each other. How much are you both making? And that's what we did. We balanced it out. How much was I making a month? How much was he bringing in a month? And Not this growth was, either. I'm no, talking about this net, is after like, the taxes are taken out. Right. And that's what we did when we were first preparing to save money and to pay off our debt. So I was completely honest. I was like, okay, this is how much I'm making a month. How much are you making? Okay, this is how much he brings in a month. We added the amount and then we listed all of our bills, mm -hmm. all of the necessary, like everything that was every month that was coming out. And so then we saw, okay, 
This is how much is being taken out for bills. This is how much was taken out for rent or mortgage. Um, and this is what we have left over. Mm -hmm. Leftover money isn't always just fun money. That's like groceries. Mm -hmm. That's like an emergency like... Luna fun. <laughs> yeah. Or an emergency like the battery dies in the car. We have to go get the battery. Oh, I mean, yeah. Because we had that, Oh, right? yeah. We're there's, trying to save money. And then, oh, yeah. We need a car battery. Something. Oh, we need to fix this on the yeah. car. We need tires. Yes. We need this. So you got to think about that, yeah. too. You know. Um, so, so definitely, you guys, it's important to have it on paper. You and your significant other, put it all on paper. Be honest with each other. And then also on paper, put your own personal expenses. So that's also what we did just to see if we could budget it in, which is when I realized, oh shit, I'm spending like like $600 a year on my nails. Like every single time I would get my nails done, it was like $35. And I'm like going twice a month, that's $70. <laughs> that's 70 bucks just for my nails that I could have used for something else. So that's why I got rid of them. Um, and then the Starbucks thing, you know, I probably spend like maybe like $30 a week on Starbucks, $30 a week. <laughs> He's going to do the math right now. <laughs> it's $120. That's $120 a month on Starbucks. <laughs> and I say 30 because sometimes I get like, I'll get the drink, but then sometimes I pick up a sandwich or a breakfast or a little thing or whatever. So I, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm estimating high, but it's usually about 30 bucks. Or 40. <laughs> Stop. I'm just checking. You're already like looking at it? Yep. It's because I reload, I have the Starbucks rewards card, so I reload 10 bucks here, 10 bucks here, 10 bucks here. <laughs> okay, don't put me on blast. I'm not. Um, we'll talk so about it later. <laughs> So um, you ha you guys have to put it on paper. That to me that it works best when you put it on paper. Then you're seeing literally how much you have, what you have to play with, and it will change your world when you see your numbers on paper. Because <laughs> for us, we were like, there is no way in hell we're gonna pay off debt and save at the same time. We couldn't. It was just not possible. So we had to tackle one demon before we did the next one. Um, so what do we do first? We paid off our debt, right? Right. So um, a lot of people don't have that option to like move in with family or whatever. We were able to do that. So all our, what we were putting in for rent was pretty much free money that we were able to throw into the savings or we use it to pay off debt. So when we were, well, how much did we pay for our rent before? 1300 It was 1300 So what we would do when we moved in with my parents, $1,300, we told ourselves, plus like me getting rid of the nails and stuff, so a little bit more. We were literally throwing in, like, I mean, I remember throwing in like $700. No, I'm totally grateful for that. We had the opportunity. Not everybody but, has that. But no, not everybody has that. I mean, but we trust did, me, it wasn't easy. Street. It wasn't easy and it was not... <laughs> The, it was not fun to know to th literally you guys we do you remember that like transferring seven hundred dollars into a credit card oh it's the best feeling in the world it was not the best feeling in the world for me it was okay because you knew oh my credit card is gonna be seven hundred dollars less but it sucked when it was like dude that's seven hundred dollars I we could do well it makes you realize like <laughs> do, did, did I need to buy that yeah so well Maybe. that's what we did so that's a tip for you guys. Um, if you have the ability to move in with parents or front family rent free, tr you still pretend. Or even, even pay a bill. I mean, yeah. I don't know. But I mean, if you do, you, you still pretend like you're pay that you have that rent money. But we're, we're going away from the subject itself. But I'm like, giving them a tip on how to like get out of debt. Well, but they're asking if what, how do you do together. deal with together exactly? So communicate. Just just communicate. Put it on paper. Um. <laughs> Communicate, put it on paper, have a plan. Have a plan. I mean, what you keep... have to get rid of stuff that you want yeah. to. Like, you sometimes you have to cut things out. We what do we cut out? Like to minimize bills. Do you really need that Netflix monthly account? It's ten bucks. I know, but sometimes ten bucks is a lot for people. That gym membership. Hey. Well, I'm real skinny now, but. <sighs> um, the gym, hey, be active because that will help you with the stress itself. It you're, will help you, but I'm, I'm saying so they free up money. 
Well, if you could get a, a oh, if you're paying like 50 bucks for a gym membership, then you don't really go. Then yeah, it's just it. I think I guess like the first the where where to look is like your fun money then. Yeah, your, like where where, where are, you, are you spending when you don't technically need to spend it? You want Starbucks? Fine, Let's get a Starbucks once a week instead of like five times a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love Starbucks, you guys. I'm sorry. If Starbucks would ever sponsor my YouTube videos, I would be so amazed. Anyways, so, coffee. <laughs> so dealing with money stresses, money is your money is always going to be something to stress over. I don't think you will ever be satisfied with money. I we I feel like we still stress about money because we have these like random ass things that happen that where it costs money. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like if you could put some a little bit of money away in a savings and start building your savings, that will take away a lot of your stress when these random ass things happen. Um, so if you can, like 20 bucks, oh, $20 will start to grow when you pile it up. But if you could put more, put more. Or let's like, like or okay. Play a lotto. Oh, here's a good tip too. Oops, excuse me. Our, our monthly phone bill is going to drop because we're, we're, we'll have paid off our phones. So we're gonna have like $75 free. Like my phone, I will run it to the ground yeah, he will. before I, I upgrade. And and actually, I agree to do I, that I, I don't need the new, latest and yeah. awesome phone. So it's nice, but. So we, by paying off our phones next month, our bill is gonna be. Um, Less. Less, like by 70, I think it was like 75, 80 dollars. I don't care, as long as it's less. But. A tip, you guys, when that happens, when you see free money like that, pretend like you're still using that same amount for that bill and throw we're, that extra we're, we're, we're 70, going, we're going okay, off throw that off. extra okay. 75 to $80 into your savings account okay. or next, into your debt question. account. Next question. Because oh we're, 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 no, we're, we're, like, we're going like off. You're asking about the stress, not how do you save. I guess, but there are some tips. I, I guess. Sorry guys, if you want actual tips, you can ask me later and I'll make another video. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number four, three biggest components when it comes to a stable, long-lasting relationship. Three biggest components. Don't be attached at the hip, please. Go, list your three, I'm gonna list my three. I'll have three. Okay, well then, I, I, what, I, is, what are your like, your, oh, I, I, your you said give me these questions before I could prepare something. Okay, I'll, I'll go then. Oh, wait, hold on, let me see. Mr. Biggest components when it comes to you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, for me, to have a long lasting relationship, communication, mutual understanding, and sexual attraction. <laughs> <laughs> for my top three um and i'll elaborate a little bit communication is key i feel like before the good sex before the physical attraction and before like anything else i feel like if i can't communicate with my significant other there's no relationship so communication is key to me in my opinion um mutual understanding if I have interests that are different from my significant other, which chances are a lot of you guys are gonna have differences in, in interests and stuff, but I still understand or I still embrace his changes, his differences, to me that makes a stable relationship because you have that mutual understanding um, or a mutual understanding in like disagreements and stuff. I may mean, not always agree with something he says, but if, if I can like see past that and still like enjoy the relationship and communicate and all that stuff, I feel like that creates a strong bond. And then sexual attraction to me is like, if I don't, if I don't feel sexually attracted to my mate, I'm not going to want to be with them. And so to me, that's important. I'm not saying that the sex has to be good because sex can always be learned. Like you can always, um, improve, right? So to me, it's like, I have to physically be attracted to my person um, and vice versa, I feel. I feel like that just creates a strong bond, like attraction. You gotta be attracted to the person. Good hygiene, you know? Like, you gotta find them sexy and you gotta find them like, you gotta love their body, whether they have flaws or no flaws, you know? And so to me, it's like, that's, that makes a strong relationship. And the sex is like, when people say, oh, they have to have, they have to have good sex or they, whatever. To me, it's like, you know, 
sex will evolve as the relationship evolves. <laughs> In or my die. opinion. I mean, I don't know. It, I think the stigma they have behind you after you get married is like, ugh. Oh, well, no, but maybe not, not like how but. it dies. I think it's, I honestly think that the longer you're with someone, the better the sex. Because I feel like you, um, you learn each other's bodies and the way they like to be touched and all that stuff. So to me, in my opinion, it improves. But yeah, like the amount of times you have sex, it might lessen. But that's life. I mean... Sometimes you have other stuff pop up. <laughs> I don't know. But that's me. That, so those are my three strongest components. What are yours? Yeah, you got communication. I think communication is like... That's the big thing. The I mean, if you have no communication, thing. there's nothing there. Yeah. And, and it's you not have to just... Have a, you have to have attraction to them. Because if you don't have attraction to them... Like physical attraction? Physical, mental... And emotional, emotional attraction. attraction. Everything. Like, yeah. If you don't have any of that, it, it's one's going to... Someone, well, someone will drift off and like their eyes are going to start wandering mm -hmm. and I, I feel like that yeah I feel like that and it, that's true actually that you say that not just physical attraction but emotional attraction mental attraction like there is a such thing energy attraction um see that little aura around them <laughs> or don't <laughs> I just yeah no but it is that's true though there is a thing like that's such a thing but I think Overall, it's communication. What was your other one? Or what are your other ones? Mm. I mean, the main thing for me is like a communication thing. Because if you don't have no communication, it just, it's, it's done. Yeah. It's done. I mean, pretty sure people could think back on prior relationships when there's no communication and it's, it's just over. Yeah. Same thing with physical. I mean... Mm -hmm. When you stop the sex, or when you stop yeah. the even just kissing, yeah. Remember when, when I wasn't holding your hand and you because it's too hot. He called me out on it. He's like, "Why don't you hold my hand?" And I was like, "Cause your hand's sweaty and it's hot." I'm weird like that, but I realized it hurt his feelings and it bothered him. So I don't care no more. He, now he doesn't care, but it did though, and I was like, "Oh, it bothers me." Because he wants to hold my hand. I'm like, "Oh, you want to hold my hand now?" <laughs> So we're, we're that couple though, we don't really, we don't hold hands as much anymore. Not as often. I don't think we ever did. We did when we first were together. And then my hand got we were like lovey-dovey. And then my hand got sweaty. I know, but I'm sorry, honey. Don't touch I'm me. one of those people though, like, oh, your hand's sweaty. Your hands are sweaty right now. <laughs> I'm touching my water bottle. No, it's not water. <laughs> it's a form of liquid, but not water. <laughs> but we, we do, we have, we have, um, what do they call it? P public display PDA public display of attraction affection affection. What about it? I feel like we're we're pretty like we're not like making out in front of everybody, but like if we hold hands, we'll hold hands or I'll hold. Uh, I laugh when I see that. I'm sorry. Me. I'm sorry. I I'll laugh when I see that. He hugs me. I I'll give him peck on the lips or whatever. Nothing wrong with that, but I mean like you got some major hardcore P PDA and it's like. <laughs> Me personally, I'm like... That's a pet peeve of his. <laughs> oh, I love you. What are you, like 16? Anyways, <laughs> number five. Probably. Um, number five. So these are more personal questions for us. So what are your husband's honest thoughts on your spiritual journey now versus in the beginning? In the beginning, I, was, I hated it. Yeah, that was the, that was the one. Like, you're gonna it bring, almost broke us up. You're going to bring... Wait, no. Oh, what are your honest opinions of my spiritual journey now versus in the beginning? Oh, like the beginning of our relationship? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you were like lost. Yeah. Dazed and confused. Uh, and it's interesting that you say that because I was... So when I first met him, I was a born-again Christian. And then I evolved into... I went. I converted back to the Catholic Church. And then I like went off into fucking another planet. Like, I just... I, <laughs> My spiritual journey has evolved. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading ahead. Stop. What's your honest opinion? Oh. They want to know. What's your honest opinion of it? The, the beginning was just, hmm, this is different. Um, I think she was, I, I felt she was lost. I think she was more like influenced brainwashed if you want to call it so to mm -hmm. speak um but it wasn't necessarily her it was i was trying it, to be what the family, what everybody wanted what everyone wanted me to be yeah 
and I was, and it wasn't really what I wanted, but I thought, well, if that's I guess, the right way from the family right like way. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then once I started to think for myself a little bit, we, I started going, I went to the, I went to the Catholic church so we can get married. That mm -hmm. was like one big motive because I wanted to get married in the church with him. And so I converted back because I used to be Catholic. And then we went to church together. And then we got married. It's the same thing. And then like, and then I like started dabbling into my own other path and I discovered myself. How do you feel I am now? Good. You help other people. <laughs> that's awesome. I think oh. that's, that's great. So you prefer this version of me than the one that when we first met? Oh yeah. <laughs> You guys wouldn't recognize me how I used to be. We'll put it that way. Um, number six. What do you love about each other? The quirkiness. Oh, no wonder you're reading ahead so you can answer. Yeah, because I'm like, I, I think you already prepared your like, answers. I like, I like to just see first impression. That's why. Hey, My quirkiness? Because mm -hmm. I'm weird? You're what? weird. <laughs> that's actually something I told him too. I was like, when you're for your graduation, I feel like I'm gonna be. I just I, anything we do, anything. So trip on air. I trip on air. <laughs> I laugh at like things that I probably shouldn't laugh at. I'm loud. I I just I'm different, and I feel like when we go to like important gatherings, and now that we're like in our thirties, you know, most of our friends or people that we're associating with are married. And so whenever we're around other people and, and, and I meet their wives or whatever, I just feel like I'm weird. They probably think she's weird <laughs> They too. probably think I'm weird too. Like, what is up with this one? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So that's, you like my quirkiness? Mm -hmm. Oh, what about a physical? What do you love about me physically? Everything. <laughs> And anything else you want to add to that? I just love you in oh. general. Oh, my honey. So I love, what do I love about you? Um, I love your smile lines. Let's get physical first. His smile lines. All my like wrinkles. Everything. I just, that was like, I, when I saw one of those pictures when I was swiping through the dating app when I met you. Oh, I figured about that. That was like the first thing that I saw. Um, I like about you, I like how grounded you are. And you're like organized. You're grounded. I'm a stress ball. What are you talking about? You're level-headed because I'm like not like that. So he really grounds me and he makes me feel stable and secure and just like he brings me back to earth. <laughs> so I like that. I like that. he may, He's just, you've always made me feel safe, secure. You always like put it, things into perspective where so I don't freak out. You like bring me back yeah, down. Yeah, she freaks out. Yeah. Like bad. You bring me back down. So I love that about you. Like that movie, was it? Um, oh, movie. Sandra Bullock, Gravity. Oh yeah. Yeah, like going out to space. And you just gotta like, get ah, and come back to back reality. To <laughs> um, number seven. Oh, oh, okay. Here's the last one. How do you balance tarot wife duties, work, and cat mama duties? Well, I can't really answer that one because that's. Too <laughs> so how do I balance it? Um, it's been easy the last seven months, you guys, because being a wife um, has technically been through text and phone calls because he's gone pretty much six days of the week, every week. <laughs> so he's only been home like four days out of each month, if he can come home. Yeah. But that's going to end next month. So um, it's been easy being a wife because it's, like I said, it's just been texts and phone calls. Um, but you kind of have to, you have to divide your attention. Um, the cat mama's duties is every day, just like, just like the bills and being a wife is every day. Um, and then doing my tarot, I, I designate certain days for tarot. So I only do tarot, um, Friday through Monday and I do my day job Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Um, so by designating certain days for like the duties, the jobs and stuff, that makes it easier. Oh, 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 oh look what I have here. <laughs> It's in the fridge. Water? Yeah. See, he's talking about me in Starbucks. And what did I do today when he went to go get a haircut? I sat in that line and I got him a Starbucks. 
which I use my rewards card, by the Thank way. Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so I would say just utilizing your time by dividing, dividing it up. You don't always have to do tarot every single day. You don't always have to do this and that. But I think the one thing is just know that every single day, the important things are to be present in your relationship. Give time to your significant other. Yeah, I, so I call her. I'll text her early in the morning. Yeah, uh, we have our I... designated times. Like I know after 7 p.m. is usually my time to be with him on the phone um, right now because that's our situation. But when we're married, like when we're when we're every day, like when you're working, I have to get used to his new work schedule. So design you gotta designate time for your significant other, whether you're living together or you're not. Um, and it doesn't have to be every day. Thank you. That's a big one. And I learned that too. Because when I met him, I wanted to see him every day. And he wouldn't. Because you would just wear it down. Well, at least in my opinion. Yeah. You wear out the relationship fast when you see each other every day. When you're first dating. They don't become just a... It's just like... sit it, down in the car and not talk. You don't have anything to talk about. And it's so true. So, yeah. You don't always have to see each other every day. And even when you're married, too. Like, sometimes you don't see each other every day. You're working. Your schedules are, like, mm -hmm. clashing. And it's kind of nice at times. Because then you do have stuff to talk about when you're together. So, having your own interests also I think is important mm -hmm. I do tarot he doesn't know anything about it but he always wants a reading um, but he has his interests I have my interests and then we have our mutual interests you know so it's just it's just like dividing up your time and then also I think don't you don't always have to go places on the weekends like when you're when you have time together sometimes it's nice to just stay at home cook at home or have him watch a movie mm -hmm. you guys don't always have to go out spend money be out and about unless barbecue, you like barbecue that in the backyard if, if you live at home yeah unless you, barbecue. <laughs> unless you like that thing and you have the money for it but right. we we learned to be like cheap staying in cheap because that's what we had to do when we were paying off debt mm -hmm. um but sometimes it's just like i don't want i've been at work or i've been doing this and that i just want to be at home with him you know and the cats so, utilizing your time wisely and have a schedule for everything else. You know, with the cats, I feed them in the morning and in, in the evening. I scoop their litter boxes twice a day. Like, I have a schedule. I have a schedule for paying the bills. I have a schedule for, you know, all that other stuff. And that, that kind of keeps me mm -hmm. in track. But when it comes to the fun stuff, like spending time with, my, with him, um, like this weekend, or um, like the days that he's home, it's like I really try to designate my time and attention on him and not so much on social media or you know, other things. And that's why I wanted to film this video with you because mm -hmm. it's like time to do something for TCM, but at the same time, it's like you and me time. So it was fun. Did you have fun? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, guys, this is a 47 minute video. I'm gonna go ahead and end it here, upload it. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any other questions, leave them below. If you have any other tips or advice for any of the topics we talked about, leave it below. And do you have anything else you'd like to add? Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, guys. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Bye.